ten times Boruto ignored everything the original Naruto stood for. It's one thing to try to set the Boruto series apart from its parent show and another to make the head-scratching decisions it has. There have been several changes with Boruto that fans of Naruto haven't always been pleased about. In some cases, it's how characters are portrayed in the series, and in others. It's the massive jump in technology the world experiences. Others just flat out don't like Boruto as a character either. The complaints are numerous and a lot of the time they are justified. Boruto has veered away from many things that made the original series so great. It's one thing to try to set it apart from its parent show and another to make the head-scratching decisions it has. 10. Side characters no longer matter. One of the things part 1 of Naruto did exceptionally well was use its side characters to their fullest. All of the characters in Team 10 underwent an arcade. From Choji reaching his butterfly form Ino growing to accept Sakura again, or Shikamaru overcoming his laziness. They all were important in their own ways. Compare that with Team 10 in Boruto. And there is a huge difference. The only member who gets any screen time is Chocho, and she's just Sarada's friend, nothing more. 9. Power UPS no longer feel earned with hard work. Training arcs aren't always the most exciting kinds, but they help show off a character's progression very well. They were the lifeblood of Naruto up until the end of Shippuden. Naruto always had to work hard for everything he got, and the same could be said of Sasuke as well. That doesn't feel the same for Boruto, who has power ups just handed to him. From the Jogen to his Kama. It strips away the meaning of hard work always paying off. 8. Boruto isn't about breaking the cycle of hatred. The biggest theme of Naruto was breaking the cycle of hatred that was rooted in shinobi society. It's why so many of his fights ended with some form of talk no jutsu. Where he helped show the villain the error of their ways. It's only happened in Boruto once with some ire. While it makes sense for Boruto to try to go in a different direction. The one they have has pretty much boiled down to defeating targets and moving on to the next one. 7. Villains are no longer shaded in grey. The difference between Akatsuki and Kara is a stark one. Even the minor members of Akatsuki had interesting stories or at least helped drive home a character development for another character. Both Pain and Itachi were brilliantly portrayed characters who had reasonings fans could empathize with. That isn't the case with Kara, as almost all of them are one-dimensional. They are there to be bad guys and nothing more than that. It makes them less interesting as a result. 6. There aren't any long-term threats. Another thing Naruto did a great job with was keeping villains around long enough to make an impact. Orochimaru was there from the very beginning of the series and is still making a small impact now. Akatsuki showed up midway through part 1 and lasted until almost the end of the whole series. It's a stark difference from Kara, who is already bleeding members. Outside of Koji. They only show up to get defeated and forgotten about. 5. Lack of character connections throughout the world. Part of what made Naruto so great is that the characters all seem to know about each other. Some connections spread beyond the village. Itachi was innately tied to Sasuke, just as Nagato and Konan were to Jiraiya. Everyone also knew who Madara was, giving his name a degree of weight. In Boruto, there isn't any of that. It makes the world feel more static and less alive. Even the Atsutsuki are known only by their clan name. 4. Everything revolves around the Atsutsuki the chakra fruit. While the end goal of Naruto was always achieving some form of peace in the world, be it with Nagato, Abito, or even Madara. It wasn't the only thing that mattered. 
Orochimaru only wanted to learn as many jutsu as he could, Kabuto only wanted to surpass his mentor, and others wanted to perfect their art. With Boruto, everything revolves around the Atsutsuki, or the chakra fruit. No matter the character, that's always the end goal. 3. Power levels aren't balanced as well. In Naruto, both Naruto and Sasuke had the potential to be powerful characters, flashing that strength on more than one occasion. Despite this, it was all potential, as a hierarchy was in place. Kakashi stood above them in power for all of Part 1 and nearly half of Shippuden, helping give Team 7 a benchmark to measure itself. With Boruto, Kanoamaru has already been surpassed by his students and often serves as nothing more than fodder for a new villain. 2. Boruto's rivalry pales in comparison to Naruto. For as annoying as Naruto's constant forgiveness of Sasuke was, it was a well-handled rivalry for the most part. They helped push each other. And it told a good story of overcoming hatred. It was one of the main storylines in the whole series. Boruto's may reach that point with Kawaki, but as it currently stands, it took too long for him to appear. There isn't the same connection between the two as Naruto and Sasuke had. To compensate, it feels as if their relationship is going to be rushed through. 1. Naruto's character development was stunted. The biggest thing Boruto didn't take or understand from the Naruto series is the title character himself. There are times in Boruto where Naruto does things he never would have in the original series. The way he casually neglects his duties as a father is something the character would never do. He'd wanted his whole life to have a family that loved and cared for him. It's never made sense why he'd then toss it aside once he had it. Naruto, from the original series, would always find a way to make time. 